Friends, Romans, countrymen, Lemurians. Hello, welcome to Magical, Mystical, Mythical Monday, where we talk about mythology, religion, fairy tales, cults. Today, we're talking about the OG misunderstood bestie. Medusa. You probably think she's a monster. You probably think she's a horrible, disgusting, ugly creature of the deep. No, she's none of those things. Her story has been told to you completely wrong your whole life. So, you know, get ready to be shook. Get ready to be angry too. And before we go any further, I do want to say that some pretty bad things did happen to Medusa. Like, she ended up as the snake-haired Gorgon after some trauma. If you're going to be upset by mentions of assault specifically, turn this video off. It's not for you. Tune back in for the next one. So, Medusa. Medusa was a woman who lived in mythological ancient Greece. She was the daughter of the sea goddess Ceto and the sea god Phorkys. During her human life, she was considered the most beautiful woman in all of Athens. And specifically, she had really gorgeous hair. Everyone used to comment on it. Everyone used to try and touch it. She was like a walking L'Oreal ad. Think Eva Longoria. Medusa was, you know, hashtag worth it. So because Medusa was such a hot and sexy queen, all of the men in the city of Athens were like totally in love with her. Eros, who was Aphrodite, the goddess of love's little uh, minion, sort of the Greek equivalent of Cupid, was going around pinging off arrows, arrows, arrows. Everyone was in love with Medusa, but she was only in love with one person, and that was the goddess Athena. Medusa was like mega religious, was a big fan of Athena. Athena is the Greek goddess of wisdom. She's the warrior goddess. She's the daughter of Zeus. She's this fierce, ferocious woman, and Medusa was obsessed with her and wanted nothing more than just to be like a priestess to Athena. So she became a priestess to Athena and the main stipulation of being a priestess to Athena was you weren't allowed to have relationships of any kind, ever, nothing. It was basically like being a nun. So Medusa became this ancient equivalent of a Catholic nun and all the boys in the sapphics were absolutely devo. So when Medusa started serving as a priestess, like leading services for Athena in the Acropolis in Athens, the congregation doubled because everyone was obsessed with Medusa and how hot she was. And her hair, her like L'Oreal, you're worth it waves are specifically relevant because that was the thing that everyone used to specifically hype. One of the boys, one of the days watching Medusa's services, lusting over Medusa as she like, you know, led the worship to Athena, said that he thought that Medusa's hair was probably better than Athena's herself. So he said that Medusa was essentially hotter than Athena and that her hair was probably more beautiful than Athena's hair. You know who heard this? Athena herself. Because Athena, you know, up on Mount Olympus, liked to keep in touch with what was going on. During her services, she'd noticed Medusa. And Athena heard these boys on planet Earth comparing Medusa to Athena and saying that Medusa might be more attractive than Athena. And Athena was not happy. Anyone who knows mythology knows most of the goddesses of Mount Olympus are not really particularly girls girls. Athena definitely was not a girl's girl. As soon as she heard this unfavorable comparison between Medusa and her, she was fuming and was like, something has to be done about this girl who's getting more hype than me at my own masses. She's meant to be hyping me and everyone's just there to see her. Athena was not a happy camper. At the same time that Medusa was causing this massive stir in the city of Athens, Athena was also in the middle of an argument with Poseidon. There's dispute over what exactly Athena and Poseidon were arguing about. Every story of what the beef was about is different. They were fighting, that's all you need to know. Poseidon sees that Athena is rattled by this really hot priestess, Medusa, and he's like, you know what I could do? I could kill two birds with one stone, get with the hottest girl in Athens, and at the same time, really annoy Athena. If Medusa, or indeed any of Athena's priestesses, has any type of relationship. They can't be a priestess anymore. They're no longer loyal to Athena because Athena was a virgin goddess. They have to stay full nun status or not be allowed to serve Athena anymore. So Poseidon goes down to Athens in human form. He descends to Athens, puts on his meat suit, finds Medusa and starts putting the moves on her. She's not into it, even though he's really, really good looking. She's like, nope, the only person I love is my goddess. Athena, I'm her priestess, there's gonna be no funny business. So Poseidon's like, okay, this isn't working as a human, I'll show her that I am Poseidon, the god of the sea. So he kind of reveals to her that he is Poseidon and she's still like, no, I'm not into it. I'm a priestess. I need to keep my nun vibes. And this is where the story gets dark. 
Poseidon will not take no for an answer, so Medusa runs away from him. Looking for refuge, she runs to the temple of her patron goddess Athena. Unfortunately, Poseidon catches her in the temple and has his way with her. So after he's done, Poseidon schleps back off into the sea and Medusa's devastated, obviously. So she immediately starts praying to Athena saying, oh my God, like, I, like did you see what just happened? Like, you know, Poseidon just followed me into the temple. Like I'm extremely traumatized. I just went through one of the worst things a person can go through. She had been praying to Athena while Poseidon was chasing her, but Athena hadn't appeared. After Poseidon was gone and done, Athena did appear. And instead of punishing Poseidon, Athena decides to punish Medusa for defiling her temple. So she says, okay, you think you're hot shit? You think you're hotter than me? You think you're having a better hair day than me all the time? Well, I'm gonna take your beauty away from you. And it was Athena who transformed Medusa into a monster. She turned her gorgeous L'Oreal hair into snakes and she made her face really ugly, I guess. And she also made it so that any man who looked Medusa in the eyes would immediately be turned to stone. Medusa goes through one trauma straight into another trauma and it's not really clear in any of the stories whether Athena also sort of messed up Medusa's head as she was transforming her into the monster, the Gorgon, known as, you know, the iconic, iconic in a bad way, version of Medusa. But either way she lost her mind and she was no longer a functioning human being inside of her monster exterior. She started roaming the streets of Athens in a permanent rage, turning everyone she saw into stone. This is where we meet the hero of our story, Perseus. Doesn't even feel necessary to say, but I don't really consider Perseus to be the hero of this story. I think it's a story entirely without any heroes. Perseus was the son of Zeus and a mortal woman, Danai. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Let me know if I'm pronouncing it right. Cyberbully me in the comments below. Danai was the princess of Argos, not the shop, the place in Greece. When she got pregnant by Zeus, her father, the king of Argos, figured, I don't know what the hell is gonna come out. I don't know what this kid is gonna turn out like. So he exiled both of them to an island out to sea and Perseus grew up in exile. When Perseus reached adulthood, the king of the island that him and his mother were exiled on decided he wanted to marry Perseus's mother. Perseus wasn't happy about this. So he said, listen, don't marry my mother, set me a quest and I'll go out and, you know, fulfill your quest. I'll get you anything you want. And in return, you have to not marry my mother. The king of this island who wanted to marry Perseus's mother decided to set Perseus what he thought was a completely impossible task. He was like, okay, go and kill the monster Medusa currently terrorizing Athens and bring her head back to me. So Perseus was like, okay. I mean, in this story, Perseus was meant to be like about 16. So he was like, sure, I'll take on this impossible mission. This is gonna go great. This is where Athena comes back into the story. Um, at this point, I think she was regretting how she would treated Medusa, or maybe she wasn't, I don't know. But when Perseus started praying for assistance in his mission to kill Medusa and bring his head back to this man who wanted to marry his mother. Um, Athena stepped in and she was like, okay, I agree this Medusa thing has potentially gone too far. I, I don't think she took any responsibility for how terribly she behaved towards Medusa and God knows Poseidon didn't either. But she stepped in and she gave Perseus um, like a mirrored shield so that he would be able to see Medusa without having to look at her because obviously if he looked at her, he would get turned into stone. So off Perseus goes with his mirrored shield, him and Medusa have a standoff and he ends up overpowering Medusa and cutting off her head. Because Medusa had had the completely non-consensual intercourse with Poseidon in the Temple of Athena that wound up getting her turned into the Gorgon Medusa, she was pregnant at the time. Um, so yeah, Perseus not really a hero, murdering a traumatized pregnant lady. Mm not really a hero in my book. So when Perseus cut off her head, the baby of Poseidon's that she was unwillingly carrying sprang out of her neck hole and it was the Pegasus, the flying horse. So that's where the Pegasus comes from. After that, the head of Medusa was Perseus's very special secret weapon. He carried it with him everywhere in a special knapsack that he got from Hermes, not the parcel delivery service. Hermes, the messenger god, he popped Medusa's head into the knapsack he got from Hermes the messenger god and every time he came up against a foe after that he would pull Medusa's head out of the knapsack and turn the foe into stone using her severed head. 
<laughs> the interesting thing about the depiction of Medusa in pop culture is she's everywhere. The head of Medusa is used as logos by multiple brands. The snake hair has become so iconic. She's a major character in Percy Jackson. There's a version of her in Monsters, Inc. And I feel like if you don't know the story, if you just think, oh, just this monster that came from somewhere and had snakes for hair and could turn people, specifically men, into stone, it's kind of a cool story, but um, the real story is just a lot darker. And I wish the people who had knowledge of mythology, like, for example, the writers of Percy Jackson had given Medusa a bit more respect. I'm not knocking Percy Jackson. I'm actually a huge Percy Jackson fan. I read the books with my younger brother and I loved them. But I just think that more respect should be put on the name of a woman who was entirely the victim in her own story and was turned into entirely the villain in her own story. We should start like a hashtag or something, hashtag justice for Medusa. If anyone has a better idea for a hashtag than hashtag justice for Medusa, because I know that's kind of lame, um, let me know. Follow me on Instagram at empires underscore end, tagged in the description box below. Anyway, there you go. That's the story of Medusa. If you're still watching, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.